What does it take to heal when surrounded by descendants of those who committed the ultimate betrayal 100 years ago? The vibrant, thriving Greenwood section of Tulsa, Oklahoma had set up an economy so strong and affluent that it was called Black Wall Street. That was until it posed a threat to the white status quo, who in an act of racialized vengeance almost a century ago left the streets strewn with charred rubble and the bodies of its African-American residents. Just an hour west and beginning around the same time, a sinister darkness had cast its shadow over Osage County and the Osage tribe whose members became among the country's wealthiest citizens when land they were assigned. And more importantly, the mineral rights beneath that land turned out to have vast pockets of oil. White locals flocked to the area and clung to the tribe's members like parasites. Dependents bred resentment and vastly overcharging tribe members wasn't enough. The federal government kept coming up with laws that helped separate Native Americans from their land and the government appointed and paid local lawyers and businessmen to act as guardians, who played gatekeeper and scrutinized the flow of money that rightfully belonged to tribe members on the grounds that would otherwise squander their fortunes. Many of the Osage were regarded as incompetent and had to justify their needs before receiving money that was their share of lease payments from oil companies. The Osage Nation Reign of Terror was the next step in exploitation as numerous tribe members began turning up dead. Some were shot, others appeared to be poisoned or died after their cars were run off the road. Their headrights, quarterly distributions from the Osage Mineral Estate, reverted to the white spouses who became the new recipients of payments. Some of the land fell under the control of lawyers and the guardians appointed and paid by the government to control the dispersal of funds. Just as the death of Osage were often covered up by morticians, Estimates are that as many as 60 Osage members and possibly many more might have been killed. Impossible to say because of the questionable cause of death certificates meant to help perpetrators escape scrutiny. Even now, the circumstances are murky in how so much had rights and land in Osage County wound up owned by non-Osage. This story of systemic racism and economic stranglehold was passed among members of the tribe and only caught Hollywood's attention when galleys of the David Grant book Killers of the Flower Moon, an American crime, and the birth of the FBI got circulated to studios and producers in 2016. A blueprint for a historical justice procedural about how J. Edgar Hoover's fledgling law. Enforcement Bureau dispatched a team headed by a stoic Texas ranger named Tom White. Bidding on the book quickly reached seven figures. Those offers came with alignments ranging from Leonardo DiCaprio to George Clooney and Brad Pitt. Upstart company Imperative Entertainment blew others out of the water with a $5 million statement-making bid, and it soon signed Oscar winner Eric Roth to adapt. Paramount came in along with DiCaprio and Scorsese. Both had deals at that studio, and suddenly there was the prospect of Scorsese pairing his favorite lead actors, DiCaprio and Robert De Niro. Scorsese told Deadline last May that the course of the project was appended when he, DiCaprio, and De Niro grew uncomfortable telling a white savior, law, and order story that had been a staple of Westerns for decades. After all, the crimes were largely ignored by local law enforcement, and Hoover's men only got involved when the desperate tribe paid about $20,000 of its money to get the government to investigate the killings. The filmmakers instead leaned into the marriage between Ernest and Molly Burkhart. He was a supporting player in Grant's book who was arrested for allegedly mixing poison in the insulin he was injecting into his diabetic Osage wife, who was wasting away by the time the feds came to Oklahoma. DiCaprio and Scorsese liked the conflict faced by Burkhart, who loved his wife but still did what he was told by his uncle, William Hale, De Niro, a cattle rancher who had gained the trust of Osage locals but was eventually convicted of systematically bumping them off to collect their hedride annuity payments. Cowed by that creative shift and a $200 million budget, Paramount dropped out and Apple stepped up, and then brought Paramount back to handle the global theatrical release before the film ends up on Apple TV Plus in the heart of awards season. 